Gentlemen, we shall set up in the Uthan Shield configuration. Yes, Lord Lethandelio. So, we got a point on our thrower, we got three points on a catcher, and we got three points on a blitzer. That's pretty good. Seven skill points. That's the thing about elves, that I, I was considering this the other day. They are very injury prone. But they're amazing at scoring touchdowns. They are amazing at scoring touchdowns. So, it shouldn't be too hard to skill them up. Um, oh my goodness, he got an injury. Please be injured. Oh! So the kickoff result, which can be absolute bullshit, by the way, just caused one of his players to be out for this half. Or for this drive, which is massive, because he had a one-man advantage on us. So now he's down to uh, the, the exact same number of players. That's good. If we can score another touchdown, I make us the favorites. So he didn't knock any of my guys down on the line so far. So he's gambling that I won't be able to get to his thrower. Um, but it's not a gamble that I would take because these, these blitzes are incredibly fast. So if he ends up anywhere here, I can blitz him uh, and get the ball off him. Marking the gutter runners is very, very difficult because they have dodge, they have four agility, and we do not have tackle on anybody. Um, so guarding, marking the gutter runners is, is very, very, very difficult. Uh, and he's leaving his backfield entirely exposed. So this is good news for us. He's knocked down Elf Baster. Who knows, guys? I mean, she's she's five. She doesn't. I don't think she knows what half of these words mean. But she knows that Elf Baster is a funny word. Uh, this guy's called Blood Just Blood. This guy's called Nightmare Man. Bird of Deafness. No for Blood. He's a no for Blood. Exploding Cupcake, obviously. Dave. This guy called Dave. So if he fails to pick up, that would be really good. He made the pickup. Let's see if he runs forward a little bit. He's going to go there. Okay. That is within range of at least marking him. He takes the one dicer. It's a both down. Let's see if he burns a reroll. He does not. And I'm knocked out. That's fucking special. That's just fantastic. All right. So up you get. You go and mark him. You go and mark him. You don't have tackle, but... We do get a chance to intercept the ball if they throw it to him, but he can just dodge away. He can run down and pass, but he's not in a great position to do that, remember, because he he is miles back. Uh, so we have a chance at, at knocking this guy over, which would be great. I want you to go there. We're going to just try and get a little push and me do on this guy, and then the blitzer can get on the, the ball carrier. Perfect. Get in there, shield wrecker. Nice. Do it! Perfect. So he's now... He's got to make some rolls here, you know? He's got to make some rolls that he wouldn't want to have to make. Like, he either needs to dodge with this guy, which isn't great, because then he's then got to do quite a bit else. But, like I said, they're Skaven, they're very slippery, and it's fully possible that he will score either this turn or next turn. But we've given ourselves a decent shot. We're down two guys, remember. But there's a shot... There's another chance that we'll get the ball, which is just ridiculous. Like, all he needs to do is leave one lineman back here with the ball carrier, and it would be much more difficult for me. But he's going to go for the block with the thrower. I think. That's a pointless block. So, that was a bad move for me. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, I should say. It was a good move for him to take uh, from my perspective. He was making a block, a pointless block that doesn't matter, with a guy with loner. So remember, earlier on when he rolled both down and skull, um, and then missed the loner re-roll, that would have resulted in him being knocked down, my guy being knocked down, but the end of his turn. It would have been the end of his turn. Let's see if he can make this. Damn. He manages to block him, knock him over. But he's, he's had to pull three guys back, so that's something. Now what? Both of the runners are marked. He can't do any more blitzing. He's going to run him over here. Okay. We got guys. We got guys. We could do stuff. 
We get a chance to intercept, I think, with this guy? Maybe not. He missed the catch. Please fail again. Damn. That sucks. So now he has to make one dodge roll and he's away. Fall over! Shit. Fail to go for it! Damn! Oh, my guy recovered. That's big. Alright. He's still down a guy. That's perfect. Alright, so we're on even numbers. So now what we need to do is hold on to the ball until as late as possible and then score. Because if we give him another possession, he's probably going to be able to score. So now I'm going to try and drag the game out, stall a little bit. But I don't want to score too late. We need to take an opportunity if it comes. We both get an extra reroll. That's nice. It's a touchback. Perfect. I'm going to give it to my thrower. All right. Good shit, good shit. If we could KO a few of these guys, that would be magic. That's a stun. That's nice. So now we need to play this kind of fairly close marking game, I think. We've already demonstrated that. He will, he will rush me. How far can his gutter runners get? So that one can get to there. That one can get to the same place. These ones can get to there. So as long as we're back here... He can't get anyone to us, I'm pretty sure. What about this guy? Okay, so we need to be one more back. Go for it, Nightmare Man! Let's re-roll. Re-roll. Pow! And stunned? Nice la! Do it! Perfect! Right, nice. All right, we're in good position here. Let's see if he learns from his mistakes. So far, he hasn't. Like, if he rushes me, I, I don't care. Like, he's not going to be able to get a two-dice block on me with this guy. Even if he had two gut runners on me, it's still only a one-dice block. So I think he's trying to apply pressure and force me to pass. But I've already shown that I will do that. I like one of our touchdowns came from exactly that. We could have easily scored in the first half the same way. He tends not to mark the catchers, which is really bizarre. Because they're like touchdown machines, these lads. All right, now he's going to mark him with the thrower. But this guy can easily block him. Throws a one-dicer. Gets it. Lucky bastard. But he'll be fine. Throws another one, only gets a push. You're going to throw another one dice block? You know he is. Gets it. So that had a 33% chance of, of success. Which in my opinion is not worth a roll. He's left him unmarked. Magic stuff. Alright. We're in a good spot. He's also, if you can see, the way he followed up meant that now I get a free two-dice block on him, which is really bad for him. Good stuff. And now we get a nice two-dice blitzer on this little nerd. So I'm going to throw it right over his head. It may seem goofy, but can I get a little closer? Still a 50-50 pass. Fuck it. He can't intercept it again. Perfect. Now, I kind of think we go for it because otherwise he's going to get, let me think. He can get too many guys on me, so we'll just score. We'll score. If we'd knocked a few of his guys out in the blocking phase, I would stall. But he actually kept people in the backfield this time. And some of them are really quick. So now he's got 
Five turns to score. Again, he is Skaven, so it's fully possible. Who scored that touchdown? The other catcher. So what we need now is like a midfield kick and a blitz result. Get us a blitz kickoff result means we get a turn. He gets an extra reroll. Like what would have been nice is if we get blitz and what that gives you is you get a free turn before he does. So it's his kickoff, but you get to go first and you can easily go and pick up the ball. It's great. So let's see if yet again he fails to protect the ball carrier and goes for blocks over ball carry. That can't be the move, sir. Fail the pickup. Fail the pickup. Oh, yeah. Trouble. Now, there's a, there's a way to do this, I think, that would be really effective. I'm trying to think what it would be. We can get to there and blitz him. It's pretty risky. I think you go here and just mark them. You come around to here. And you're going to go for the YOLO blitz. He's got to make two go for it. Maids one, makes the second, knocks him over. Nice, La. And he's stunned. That's amazing. All right, that's a huge result for us. That's a great pal. Lovely. And another stun. Fantastico. Do it, blood just blood! Yes! Death to the scum! Get in there. Ka! Alright, so I do have block. He doesn't. It's a pretty decent one dice shot, and we take it. Nice la. Stay there. Right. And you can get a what a two dicer on this lad. And push him backwards. Get in there, son. Right. So we've got a guy over the ball. He has to make dodge rolls. Then he has to make blocks. Then he has to make pickups. We're in a this is great for us. That stun was huge, because it means that he can't just stand him up and add him to the block. He needs to dodge both these guys away. And even if he dodges with both these guys, tries to hit him, it's only a one dice block. Because they have two strength. So two. Plus the one helping him, three, so it's a one dice block. He doesn't have block, but we, neither do we, but he does have wrestle. Wrestle means that if you try to block him, I don't know why you take wrestle on a gutter runner, but it means if you try to take, if you try to block him with a both down result, he wrestles instead and you're both knocked to the ground safely. So uh, this is probably his best bet. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. This is about as bad as move as you could ever hope to see. Yeah. That makes more sense, doesn't it, buddy? A nice little push. All right. Don't kill him. That's nice. He's going to re-roll it. Nope. He has to take it. Good. So he has to make a dodge, a 67% pickup, another dodge, and then I guess a pass. He makes the first dodge. Let's see if he can make the pickup. He makes the pickup and the subsequent dodge. So what now? The pass and the catch. A go for it. Another go for it. And he makes the catch. Are you kidding me? Look at all these rolls he has to make and he's made them all. This is sickening. 
Doesn't it make you want to puke? Please take that option. Please take that option. Jesus Christ. Fail to go for it. That would be the best. Yes! Alright. Sweet. Now he's got to try and make some kind of a handoff. He makes it. Now he has to make two more dodges. Give me a break! Oh, you lucky son of a bitch. Alright. It happens that sometimes you get lucky. He needed so many things to go right there, and they all did. Makes you want to puke. Do you see the kind of shit I have to put up with? Alright, well, this setup has worked for us three times so far. Guy looks so violent and nothing happens. I hate that. Get him! I'm gonna re-roll that. Shit. Not great. You go back there. Cover the ball. Pick it up. Come on, he can do it. Why can't we? Come on, Nightmare Man. If the if the rats can do it. Yeah, exactly. Go for it. Go for it, Shield Wrecker! I'll take it. Even though he's free, he doesn't get a block on my dude. We've got two guys in scoring position. Alright, this is, this is to me a big gamble. Marking with the gutter runners. Because it's a super easy block for me. He's gonna block that guy. He's thinking. Still hasn't marked the runners, which means if he fails in this, I can score. Now he's thinking about marking him. Mark him with the thrower. Bear in mind, we have four agility, so we can dodge, like, very effectively. Just the way that the gutter runners did. But because we don't have dodge, we only get one shot at it. We only have one reroll left. We get the last turn as well, because it was his drive. Bear that in mind. We get the last turn. He makes the block. That's okay. By the way, you see the strength of having guys to a full full two tile gap between them. It means that if he wants to dodge, he needs to make a dodge in any of these squares. Like we've got them all covered. See the difference that having eight armor makes for uh, for elves. It's really big. That was a bad move because now this guy is free. Right. So this gives us uh, a nice little nice little push here because if I block this guy, um, I think we need to do just a couple of other little blocks first. But I'm going to be able to pop the ball carrier out and make his dodging life easier. You mark that guy. So if I block... Let me think. If we block him... Nice. Stay put. And then if I block him... Get a pow. And we get a push, you see? Push him to there. Stay put. Now he... Let me think. Actually, I'm not even sure we need to do... 83% dodge. We got a guy in scoring position. Let's see if we can... Let's pop him out. Pop him out. 
Nice, La. Okay, mark that gutter runner. Now, do we need to pass the ball this turn? I'm thinking, hell yes. So it's a 50-50 pass at 83% catch. How much, how far is this pass? That's still a long pass. Make the go for it. Medium pass. Short pass, 67%. Bingo. Thank you very much. Now he has two turns to score. He is, his guy did come back. Right, so we need to get these gutter runners. We play a bit more defensively now. Not too much more defensively. So remember, if, we're, if there's two tiles between us, he has to, has to knock this guy over in order to dodge through here, like it'll be a dodge. Yeah, so he can get to there, and then he has to dodge because of the, the tackle zone. And the same here, the same here. So we've covered all of these squares with these guys. So obviously he only has to knock them over, but if he's doing that, he has to spread his guys uh, differently. So I'm forcing him to set up slightly differently. Two guys here, two guys here, two guys here, if he wants the three two-dice blocks. So he'll have to put six guys on the line instead of just five. If he wants to go for all these two-dice blocks, which he undoubtedly does, see? So now we just need to try and hold for two turns. If we can congest him into the middle here, that's good. Because I've got guys deep and wide. We do not want him to have loads of players at the back. And he's putting him deep. Okay, so we need a really good kick here. And preferably both teams lose a turn would be the best kickoff result we could get. Perfect defense. Immaculate stuff. So now I get to set up my defense again, which is really good for us. All right, so he is going to get these three guys into the backfield, which isn't ideal. So I'm going to put a blocker here and a blocker here. And then we'll just trust these guys to be able to stop the gutter runners. Actually, wait, I think... I think we want to mark these guys, otherwise he'll be able to add to the blocks. But he'll have to do it with the gutter runners, if he wants to do that. You go there... And you go there, I think is better. Because he won't be able to get to help with the block. That's good. Alright, we'll try this. That's a fucking great result. Yeah, baby! That could not have been better. So now he has one turn to score and he cannot. He has one turn left. He didn't get anybody into scoring position. That's, that's absolute magic gold. Kill it. Bong! What a sound that is. What a what a beautiful sound. The sound of a rat body hitting the ground. Get him. Get him. Um chuck a couple more blocks here. Another stun. You know, the, the sad thing is, I think we actually could still score. If I'd set up more aggressively. I think, I think he can get to the fucking ball. Do it! Oh my goodness. That is some pure elf bullshit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shit, you guys could score too. No for blood goes for it. So if he gets the ball next turn, incredibly, he can still score from there. 
So they're going to have to try and knock this lad over. They probably will, but they can't score. I don't know if he realizes. So the journeyman, by the way, for anyone wondering, if you don't have 11 players, which he obviously didn't because he's only got one fucking blitzer, a uh, storm vermin, and you should have two, and nor does he have a big rat, uh, which is like the big guy, great big rat, rat ogre, it's got five strength, they're very strong. He's going to go for the foul? No. He is? Wow, this is such a dumb move. Terrible move. Who can get to him is the question. Trying to think how we can make this work. There's definitely a way. We'd have to get him into scoring position. F so if he goes one, two, three, four, five, I think the blitz counts as a move. Like the the, uh, the actual block itself counts as one of your move. So first things first, he needs to get to the end zone, which he fails to do. Right, we've had to use our reroll on the very first move, and he fails to do it. All right. It happens. We won 4-3. Hurrah! So that was a lot easier than it should have been, because that guy was terrible. Um, as you saw, failed to protect the ball carrier multiple times. We'll reroll that. All right, good. Not bad. I think we got to level up on one guy. So I'll show you the leveling up, how that works. Um, we've got level up on our catcher, which is nice. Uh, we are down a lineman for the next game, which isn't so great. One of our linemen got the MVP, which is not great because linemen are kind of disposable. But we got three points on a blitzer, four on our other catcher, two on our thrower. So Nightmare Man levels up. Um, sadly, those aren't his stats. Uh, level up. Let's see what he rolls. A three. So I can choose a skill, a general or agility. Um, now, dodge is like a given, I think, uh, for, for the catcher. So he's very good at catching. If I get dodge as well, he's very good at dodging. Um, but block is also a thing that you can get. Um, but I feel like it does make you harder to knock over, but equally so does dodge. Um, and it also, I think dodge has more utility in terms of, I mean, for instance, when we were trying to dodge away from that guy then, if we had dodge, we we have like twice the, twice the, tw you know, two goes at it. Um, block is only effective when you're being blocked. Uh, whereas I think dodge has the utility of you're harder to knock over because if they don't have tackle, it doesn't count as a, as a knockover. Um, and it also means that you can use it uh, when you're trying to move around on the pitch. So I, I think dodge is probably the, a, a given for our first uh, skill up on the on the catcher because it has double utility as an offensive and as a defensive and, as, and a, you know, in the offense defense of a block and also in terms of, of moving around the pitch. So I think that's pretty good. Catch and dodge is good. So he's he is our... He is our, our touchdown god so far. Um, so because we're down a, uh, a lineman, we will have uh, 10 players next time, next time plus one extra who will be a journeyman. So whoever the Moonstar replacement is, um, he will be a journeyman and he will just be a disposable lineman. So this guy, when he comes back, the injury, you know, he, he'll just be back as if nothing happened next turn. If the journeyman that you hire gets the MVP and ends up with five skill points, you can pay the cost of hiring him then and there, but he has whatever stupid goofy elf name he has. You don't get to, to change it. So we've got 60,000 in the bank, which isn't, isn't great. We can't actually afford to buy a single elf. That's how expensive they are, um, which is why if you lose a blitzer, your team is in massive trouble because these guys are god tier, um, especially when you get skills and stuff on them. I mean, seven move. Four agility. Um, one of the best things about high elves is that they have eight armor. Um, most elf teams only have seven, so having eight is really good. Um, I think dark elves might have high agility. Anyway, that was that was our team. Let me check out my. Pretty sure I've got a 
So here's a, here's a Wood Elf team, for example. I don't think I've ever pro played them. I'm not sure if I have. No, I haven't. So this is a, a Wood Elf team. As you can see, everybody has this crazy move of seven or eight, the War Dancers. This is, they start with block and dodge and leap. So you can, if you leap, you have to make an agility check to land safely, and then you can just, so you can run over the opposing team and go and get the ball. They are incredible, incredible pieces uh, in Blood Bowl, but look at the cost. Um, and they only have seven armor, so if you get punched as a war dancer, you're in big trouble. Um, if you start leveling them up and they get a really good skill, like Strip Ball is a really good one, it means if you block somebody, even if you don't knock them over, on a push result, on any kind of power result, anything, they drop the ball exactly where they, they you, you knock them over. So you push them back, they drop the ball, and because you're a war dancer with four agility, you can pick up the ball and throw it to a teammate, and they'll catch it and run on and score. You also have a tree man, six strength. Stand firm, right? They're, they're enormous. You used to be able to throw elves as a tree man. They took it out of the game because it was so stupid. Um, but you can't do that anymore. So he has strong arms so he can th and throw teammates. So he can throw a teammate. Uh, if you have a troll on, your, on an orc team, you can throw goblins at people, which is far less effective than you might think. Uh, even then, if it sounds ineffective, it is hugely ineffective. The, the goblin is likely to get injured. Um, they don't have good agility, so landing is very hard. It's never accurate. But you can literally knock the ball carrier over by throwing a goblin at him, uh, which is always good fun. Um, but the, the tree man has the take root. If he takes root, he doesn't move for the rest of the, 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 the drive. He's just literally stuck there, wherever he was. He's just stuck there on the pitch. Um, and he only has two move. But as a big guy on the front line, they're, they're incredible. And without them, you would lose like an elf every single time you had to line up. Um, against the enemy. So a tree man is is like a, a real necessity for an elf team. Um, but as you can see, seven armor, apart from the, the tree has got ten, but seven armor means any time you get knocked over, you're odds on that they're going to break your armor and you're going to end up stunned or knocked out or injured. So you your basic objective is never give them more than one block a turn if you can absolutely uh, help it. Uh, so what you do is, if you're toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone, you just dodge away. So eventually all these guys would have, like, dodge and, and, and block and stuff and be hard to knock over. And then you just step backwards. You don't let them get you toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, but look at the catcher. has eight move. He has sprint as well, so he can go for it uh, extra, uh, extra distance. I think uh, sprint means you can get three extra squares instead of just two when you go for it. So he can move 11 squares in a turn. If you get plus move on him, he can score a touchdown really easily like you get give him the ball he just runs the length of the pitch i know that stripping um who is an uh, if you haven't heard of stripping i'm sure you've heard of stripping he used to be in the yogscast he's um he's a uh, youtuber and a streamer he he plays a lot of blood bowl as well and uh I've, I've played against him a few times and he has a war dancer with 10 move um which is just absolutely disgusting and just to add uh, salt to the wound five agility so it has no concerns about moving. It can get pretty much any square on the pitch uh, it can get to. And if the ball is down with five agility, for every single tackle zone that you're trying to uh, attempt to pick the ball up in, you have like a minus one to your pickup. With five agility, it's like picking it up no problem. So for that, that war dancer is like the ultimate uh, war dancer, the one that Strippen's got. But um, you just got to get lucky with the level ups. Uh, but there's also a dark elf team. I'm not sure if I've still got my dark elf team. Let's have a look. No, I don't have them. Um, so, uh, on a Dark Elf team, um, let me just, let me just very quickly show you. So, these are all, all the different teams you can have. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, there's a lot to each of them. Too much to go into in, briefly. But, uh, Dark Elves have... Yeah, whatever. Ugh. I'm just gonna delete these guys anyway, so... So they have uh, Witch Elves, which are similar to War Dancers in, in their, what they're meant for. Um, they have Frenzy. Until you get Block, it's actually kind of dangerous. But So they have Frenzy, which means you block someone. If you don't knock them over, you get another go. But you have to follow up into the original square that they were in. So you sort of push people uh, and get a chance to block them up. Jump Up, which means if you're knocked down, you get to jump up. Um, you, you sort of basically... Uh, can can if you get knocked down you get back up again just like Chumba Wumba. Um, the Blitzers, um, they're just they're quick and they've got eight armor just like the high elf ones. 
uh, the linemen. So dark elves are very similar to high elves, but they also have uh, they you know they have runners, but they have dump off, which means if you get tackled, you get the chance to make a short pass, a very quick pass. So it's only within like three squares or something like that, um, but it can be kind of handy. And they also get the assassin, who gets the chance to stab somebody. Um, and you just basically try to beat their armor. If you roll harder than their armor, you roll an injury. Um, it's pretty pretty disgusting when you lose a player to stab. So you literally get to run up and stab people, and you get to look like a goth. Um, so anyway, that is uh, Dark Elf team. I'm, I'm not going to complete them, but anyway, Dark Elves are kind of okay. This is my best team, which is the Scrub Nuts, which is an Orc team that I've made. Um, they've had some injuries along the, the way. They've lost some players, but we have this guy, um, who is one of the most god-tier Orcs I've ever had. Plus strength. So as you saw when we had... Um, our elf ball carriers in the backfield there if he gets a guy onto the plague here to try and blitz him unless that guy has four strength what happens is he rolls a minus two dice block and a minus two dice block is he rolls two dice they're red and i get to choose the result so if you roll a skull or anything like that of course i'm going to take the skull and you're going to get knocked over so these guys, he's very hard to knock down he has eight move which is unbelievable for an orc it's normally six he's got eight he has fend which means that if you try to follow up on a block, so if you block him and you try to follow up into the square that he was in, you can't do it because he's got Fend. It also means Frenzy doesn't work against him. Um, it means that if, if you try and block him in the backfield to get the ball off him, um, and you, you can't follow up the block unless you expend another move. And generally speaking, because he's so fast, you will have had to go for it to catch him anyway. So it makes it very dangerous for people trying to catch up to him. He has Pro, which means he has a 50-50 chance once per turn of just getting a free reroll on something that he's failed. So it's like he, he can fuck up the pickup, use pro, he makes the pro roll, and then he gets to roll for pickup again, and break tackle, which means that he uses agility, uh, strength instead of agility when he's trying to dodge, uh, which is really, really strong, because he has shit agility, but he's got great strength. So he's like the ultimate at running with the ball. He's like that guy, the beast mode guy, Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson, I think. So that that's basically who this guy is. Uh, and then we've got like a plus strength black orc. So remember I was telling you about the troll that orcs can have? I don't bother with them. But they basically have these stats. Okay, so he is a free troll. He has five strength, um, nine armor. He only moves four. But the difference is that when you have a troll... Um, so if... I don't know. I can't buy players for the team. But basically, if you have a troll... Um, let me just show you real quick. Actually, I've figured out how I can do it. So, this is a troll. He's got loner, so you have a 50-50 chance of not being able to use a reroll. He has always hungry, which means when he picks up a goblin to throw him, there's a chance he will eat the goblin. Uh, he has mighty blow, which gives you plus one to attempt to, to break people's armor and injure them. He has really stupid, which means if he doesn't have a teammate next to him, he has a 50-50 chance of not doing anything that turn and just standing there with a question mark over his head. Um, and you need to then attempt to recover from being uh, really stupid the next turn. And you can just have him stand there and go, Duh, for like five turns in a row and do nothing. He has regeneration, which means if he gets injured, he gets a free uh, chance to uh, regenerate that injury for free. Uh, and he has throw teammates. So if you look at these stats, the Black Orc actually has slightly more agility. He doesn't have Mighty Blow, and he doesn't have regeneration. But that's it. So it's like all the plus sides of having a, uh, a troll... With none of the downsides. That's that's just fantastic. Another plus strength on a Blitzer, which is really good. Uh, and we have plus Agi on Lewis, our thrower. So th this is a really good team. Like, this is a really, really good team. It's very hard for people to beat them. Uh, and I've won a lot of games with them so far. Um, if you look at the play, just to give you... I realize this is dragging on a bit, but just give me a sec, okay? If you look at his statistics, he scored 43 touchdowns. All right? He's rushed for 1,520 yards. He's a fucking unstoppable touchdown machine. He's, he's a legend, um, and th this team is like the best team I've ever made. Um, and the reason is that they're very hard to block. They have guard. Remember I was explaining about blocking people, how you need to have someone next to the person you're blocking to assist in that block. Well, if that person is themselves next to an opponent, other than the one you're blocking, they don't add their strength, unless they have guard. If they have guard, they add their strength to any block. Um, and if you're standing next to someone on my team, and you're trying to block them, and you're also standing next to me, I'll add one to my teammate strength as a defensive guard. So it, there's a lot to the guarding and the blocking. It, it's all about positioning, really, but guard helps because it's much, much harder to block people when they've got uh, guard uh, around them. You, you, it's harder to get your chums in to help out, so uh, guard is a very good skill to take. Anyway, I'm going to keep doing this. Uh, some of you may not have watched Blood Bowl before. 
It is fun, it is stupid, it is goofy, it is difficult, it is easy, it is blisteringly unlucky, it's incredibly lucky, it's it's all these things at once. It's it's very, very, very frustrating, and I get extremely angry at this game sometimes. Um, but in the end, you just become immune to it, and you just kind of get used to it. But early on, you will think, why did I install this game? I just lost my two star players to this stupid one dice block uh, when the guy could have scored a touchdown, and I just don't get it. Uh, you, it's kind of like poker. You just have to accept that if you play well, overall you'll be better, and you'll come out on top in terms of uh, the number of wins that you've got. Um, but it is going to be... It is going to be brutal until that time, and you're going to suffer an awful lot. Turn off the commentators as soon as you get in-game. That is my recommendation. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace!